Good morning. morning. Welcome to our Buddhist Church of Sacramento. This is the final Sunday in the month of February. And uh, I'd like to thank our eighth grade uh, Dharma school class and Sensei Aaron Imura for uh, chairing our service. Uh, These are my students here, fourth grade. I had them in fourth grade. (laughs) Seems like just yesterday. So can you believe it? This is the last Sunday of February 2020. Our Dharma school has been so active that it is hard to imagine that our Dharma school year only has 14 more Sundays left this year, 14. Our sports program has finished the regular basketball season and is prepared now to host our own version of March Madness basketball. So March Madness, for the uh, non-sports people, is the nickname of the 68-team NCAA Division I Single Elimination Collegiate Round Ball Basketball Tournament. Did anybody fill out a bracket yet? No brackets? So I guess I'm in good keeping because my bracket empty. So uh, I brought some extra brackets so you can maybe help me. Um, There's a million dollars in prize money this year, so we can split that. I'll put these right here, get a bracket, okay? Um, This year, for our Betsuin tournament, our board of trustees has volunteered to staff the concession stand at the um, Asian Sports Foundation gym uh, just off of Laguna Laguna, uh, Creek Boulevard in Elk Grove. The tournament is March 7th and 8th. And uh, as an inspiration, I uh, borrowed borrowed something to help us focus in on the tournament play. I uh, uh, called a a special student and friend, uh, Stephen Tanaka, who is a... um, Troop 50 Eagle Scout, Temple member, and shoe expert. And uh, Stephen loaned me these. Does anybody know? Is anybody familiar with these? Ah, so the students have learned well. Okay. What are these little gems? These are Michael Jordan 11s right here. Michael Jordan 11s. This uh, special pair of wheels... This special pair of wheels was uh, is a, a commemorative, and uh, uh, these were worn by Mi- Michael Jordan in the 1995 and 1996 season. Um, this was uh, the first shoe to feature a patent leather upper, and um, it's m- extremely memorable because this was the shoe that, that Michael wore. Uh, when the Chicago Bulls uh, led the NBA with the second best record in all of history, 72 wins and 10 losses for the season. And however special to me, I recognize that this shoe, no matter how hard I try, will never make me a better basketball player. (laughs) These hands are made of stone. Yeah. But But these shoes also remind me that games, games, the games that we play, are part of the social activities and lives of many animals of the planet. Anyone who has cared for a pet dog or a cat or even a guinea pig know that uh, the play fights and chases, the running on the wheel, these help animals to be better at the phenomenon that we know as life, right? Even the octopus in the ocean practices moving stones and objects on the ocean floor. And it's thought that these skills help the octopus develop the dexterity in order to find spots, in order to hide, in order to hunt and to live. As humans, whether our games are based on a treadmill on a screen, or on a court. These interactions help us to maintain fitness, to stay sharp, 
and to entertain. So there's no need to shout about anything more than encouragement at our Betsuin tournament, right? There's no need to do more than clap and cheer. Um, so as we enter this tournament time for our Betsuin, when our students put on the Betsuin jersey, remember that while winning is fun, we're there to play. We're there to play. Play hard, play fair, represent, represent, okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, incidentally, the games uh, will run on uh, Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and uh, Sunday from 9 to 2. So uh, please treat yourself to a day off from your own kitchen and uh, stop by to see our teams play. Have uh, some shoyu weenies over rice, chili, and curry, some spam musubi, or uh, a cup of noodles. Uh, you know, uh, from time to time, my wife Cheryl and I comment on how hard it is to imagine that we have been active at our Buddhist church entering into the third decade. As if in a dream, it seems like it was just yesterday that our own children were playing basketball, that we were the parents cooking the tournament fair. And now more than ever, we talk about the changes that we see in our community. And without a doubt, we gathered here today are the result of countless causes and conditions. In Japan, way back in the year 1602, the Tokugawa shogunate had divided our Honganji temple into two branches, the western or Nishi branch and the eastern Higashi branch. Some 250 years after that, the Meiji Restoration had dismantled the samurai feudal order and created a parliamentary style of government that lasts to today. And here in America, many decades after that, the Anti-Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 had created rural and industrial demand that encouraged immigration from other countries, including and especially from Japan. Those federal policies, those causes and conditions enabled Buddhism to take root here in America. Uh, subsequently, in the decades that followed, discrimination here in our home of Northern California was such that there were few, if any, places in the public realm where children of color could play. The Asian Sports Foundation there in Elk Grove was developed in the modern day to serve as a reminder to serve as a reminder and a model that this would be a place for all to play, for all to play, as well as to acknowledge the many community pioneers who in the face of unimaginable adversity created, taught, and coached sport in order to make our community a better place. Each year at this tournament time, I try to remember the many wonderful teachers whom I've been fortunate to encounter. Many of my teachers you see here in robes. Many of my teachers you see here in the front row chairing our service. There was one teacher actually who you don't see here today. Um, he was at that time a high school senior at our temple. His name is Trevor Taniguchi. Some of you may know Trevor and his family. Trevor, having long since graduated high school and college and law school is now much less rambunctious. Um, but uh, such, so, uh, so much so that uh, today, among his other many duties, Trevor serves as the deputy city attorney for the city of Rancho Cordova and he's the general counsel for the Rolling Hills Community Service Dis District. 
Well, while on hospital duty this weekend, I had the chance to reacquaint with Trevor while attending to the birth of his baby. Yeah. Especially now, especially now, it is hard to comprehend that it was exactly 16 years ago this weekend, 16 years ago this weekend, on February 22nd, that as a high school senior, Trevor, along with our sensei, Reverend Bob Oshta, shared these words that I would like to share with you today. And it is arguable that these words resonate more now than ever. Trevor had shared, Buddhism and basketball are so very similar, each integrating the most essential teachings of impermanence and interdependence. The essence of each reminding us to live in the moment. For a team to play well and have a chance at winning, teammates must work together. One great player alone may be entertaining to watch, but it takes an entire team to win. The reality that everything is impermanent and changing is key in both basketball and in life. Trevor had gone on to say, the game and the world around us constantly change. The defense adjusts to the offense, switches are made such that no two sequences are the same. In other words, Buddhism teaches us to see things as they are, to adjust, to respond to change, and to live in the moment. As a player, one cannot dwell on what just happened. The past is past. If you sit and wonder how you missed that layup or missed that block, the other team has a five-on-four advantage going the other way. In life, we don't get a two-minute warning or know how much time is left. None of us do. None of us have the chance th to throw a desperation buzzer beater or to try to come up big at the last moment. Said another way, here we are, born into human life. Why then, why then would we not seek the most proper way to coexist, to make the best of our efforts? Knowing this, why then would we not choose to live with Dharma eyes open, letting truth be our guide? In other words, living with such awareness, why then would we not choose to treasure each moment of each opportunity and every one for whom we care and for whom cares so deeply for us? Because in doing so, by living with Dharma eyes open, we can live with clarity and take care of the treasures whom we encounter every day with a deep gratitude beyond words, not taking for granted all who bring richness to our lives. In closing, with palms pressed together, please join me in Gasho. My life is not only my life, my life is made up of the countless sacrifices, kindness, and caring of others. Thus, let us strive to hear the Dharma and live with clarity. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namanda, Namanda, Namanda.